Welcome here to Bob Wren Stadium on the banks of the Hocking River in beautiful Athens, Ohio. So we're ready for game two of this four-game set between two Mac foes, your Ohio Bobcats, and the opposing Kent State Golden Flashes. The Bobcats come into this game winning last the last game out against Kent State. They took game one, 9-4, to four, after an eighth-inning surge that was led by their seven-hole A.J. Roush and their right fielder as Roush had two home runs on the day, one in the fourth inning that drove in three, and an inside-the-park home run there in that eighth that busted the game wide open and gave the Bobcats some well-needed insurance to give them the first game one victory. They'll look to go and continue their streak against Kent State as now they have won three straight against the Golden Flashes. And we'll look to continue their streak today as they come into this game 8-6, and 2-1 and one in Mac play, while Kent State's looking to rebound and after today's doubleheader action, trying to get back to that 500 mark as they come into this game 5-7 and 1-2 and and in Mac play. On the bump for both of these squads today, first we'll start with your Ohio Bobcats. It'll be Braxton Kelly. Kelly had a little bit of a short start his last time out against Northern Illinois. Got off to a rocky start, rocky start last Friday when the Bobcats had their home opening doubleheader as he pitched and started in game two against the Huskies. Had a tough outing, but overall his statistics on the season when you look at it. Kelly has a 5.25 ERA, a 1-1 win-loss record. He's a, appeared in four games last time out. It was his first start of the season. He's pitched 12 innings on the dot, giving up 12 hits, eight runs, seven earned, and six walks, and fanned 14 different batters. And then when you look at the opposite side for the Kent State Golden Flashes, it'll be Rocco Bernardino will be up on the mound there for the Golden Flashes, who will be in their navy blues today with the dark gray pants and the pinstripes on those. The Bobcats will be in their hunter green uniforms with the white pants and their signature black hats. As we look back at the stats for Rocco Bernardino, Bernardino's ERA on the season, 7.11, an 0-0 pitching win-loss record. He's appeared in three games, all three of those being starts. He's pitched 12 and two-thirds innings, given up 13 hits, 10 runs, all 10 of those earned. Walked five batters and fanned 10 batters. As now you can see that both of the skippers are out of their dugouts, and we have our home plate meeting, home plate meeting right here. And something here for the Bobcats to notice is after yesterday's game, they put up nine runs up on the board, which has continued. And are the Bobcats now, if they can pull this one, the game one today, it'll be a win streak. And that's what it is. is you, if you can get three games in a row, that's considered a streak, said once in the great movie Major League. And the Bobcats had their first game, or correction, their game on Wednesday. They beat Marshall 6-3. to three. They won yesterday. And we've bumped this doubleheader up today. It was supposed to start at 1 o'clock. Instead, it's starting at noon today. We're going to try to get two games in. This first game will be a seven-inning game, and the second game will be a nine-inning game between the Bobcats and the Golden Flashes. And for both of these teams, coming into this game, I mean, Kent State put a lot of hits on the board yesterday. They ended up finishing with eight, while well, the Bobcats had 12. It's not like Kent State didn't have runners on base. They did end up getting runners in scoring position, but a lot were left on base for both of these teams yesterday. And for Kent State, they're going to need some of their main pr producers to get involved in this game as yesterday's catcher and backstop. Justin Mickness will not be starting this game for the Golden Flashes. He went two for three yesterday with two RBIs, both of those coming off of a two-run shot over the left center field wall to give Kent, or to, to give Kent State to maintain a close game between Kent State and Ohio, that is. But like I said, Ohio was led by their seven hole and their right fielder, who are correction, their eight hole and right fielder and A.J. Roush. Roush had a big game yesterday. Went three for four with a with a double. Two home runs, one of that being an inside-the-park home run that got by the center fielder Colin Matthews, and he rounded the bases hard and ended up chugging all the way as we're about to end the home plate meeting, and that means we will take a break aside for the national anthem, and we'll be back for first pitch. And you are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Warehouse Tire in Athens is your locally owned and operated auto and truck tire center. At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. 
Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three. Bang! And oh, baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams. And we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity. Loan subject credit approval. Federal insured by NCUA. MLS number 433809. Welcome back here to Bob Wren as we're about to get first pitch underway here. Just towing the slab for the Ohio Bobcats will be Braxton Kelly. Number 21, he'll be up there on the bump. Started last game against Northern Illinois. The second game of that doubleheader had a shorter outing as it was kind of cut short after giving up a decent amount of runs in the beginning of that ball game. But we'll go over Kent State's starting lineup today as we'll read it 1-9. to nine. It'll go Kyle Jackson playing third, Justin Kirby in right, Aiden Longwell at first, Sam Thompson behind the dish, Colin Matthews in center, Michael McNamara at short, Mac Timbrook at second, Josh Johnson in left, and Connor Ashby being the designated hitter on the day. So we're about to get this ball game underway here. As stepping up to the plate and leading off this game will be Kyle Jackson, the third baseman for the Kent State Golden Flash as Jackson went one for five in yesterday's ball game. So both these dugouts pretty loud to start this ball game as Braxton will wind and deal and we are underway here at Bob Wren as that ball skied out into shallow left field. Tracking it down is the shortstop Xavier Hendigas and it'll fall right into his glove and that'll be a first pitch. One out there for the Ohio Bobcats as they've got this game underway. Is good pitch there from Kelly, skied it out for Jackson. And one down here for the Bobcats in the top of the first. So now waltzing up to the plate will be Justin Kelly, the right fielder. Kelly in yesterday's ball game, or correction, Justin Kirby, he went two for four on the day with a strikeout. So takes a couple practice swings in the box. And Kelly will deliver. And that pitch will be a little low for a ball. First ball of the day there for Braxton Kelly. He's only thrown two pitches so far, one being the pop out there to Hennigas and shallow left field, and the other being that ball right there to Kirby. And that one will get in there for the strike, and that will be not up to this count at 1-1. So far on the season, Kirby is a 300 hitter. He's appeared in all 12 games for the Golden Flashes, started in 10 of those. As Kelly will deliver once again, and that pitch will be in the strike zone, and Kelly goes up now 1-2. Kirby in the box as he recollects himself. Worked himself into a little bit of a hole. Braxton Kelly has got up in this count already. The 1-2. A little bit of a check swing there, appeal down to first base. No, he did not go. As Kirby will stay alive, and the count is knotted up, up at 2-2 two -two now. Kirby so far in the season, a 391 OBP hitter. As the pitch there is rocketed into left center field, and that'll be a first hit down for the Kent State Golden Flashes. Tracked out for, for Peterson, he'll throw to second, and getting in there safely will be Kirby for a 
double right there. As he turned on the wheels, rounded first base hard, jumped right out of the box. Peterson tried to track it down and throw to second base, but instead hit the cutoff of Hendigas, and they were unable to get Kirby out at second base as Kent State already has a runner in scoring position here early in the top of the first. The ever-powerful Aiden Longwell playing first on the day. Step into the box. Longwell is listed as a utility player for the Kent State Golden Flashes. Saw a little bit of that yesterday as he also went up on the mound and had some appearances on the hill this season. As Kelly stared down, stares down Kirby at second base, and that'll be a swing and a miss there from Longwell. Kelly took a little something off right there. He's now up in the count 0-1. So far on the season, Longwell second on the team in batting average, a 383 hitter. And in yesterday's game, he went one for four with a double and a strikeout. Kelly tries to get the outside part of the zone, unable to get it there. As the count now evened up at 1-1. One, one. So we've got one ball, one strike, one out, one hit for Kent State, and one runner on second base. Here as they try to, try to strike early in this ball game. As Kelly's delivery is a little bit out of the zone there. The count will now be 2-1. Longwell, a 660 slugging percentage hitter, has two home runs on the season and five doubles, as well as one triple for the Golden Flashes, that being their only triple this entire season. Kelly will deliver once again, and that ball will be put into play over to Cale Baker at first base. He'll take it himself for the putout, step on first, and there will be two down here in the top of the first. But advancing on that play was Kirby at third base. As now the four hole, Sam Thompson will work up to the plate. Thompson, a 158 hitter. He did appear in yesterday's ball game only as a defensive substitution. Whenever Longwell went onto the bump, Thompson came in to come play first. Runner on third here, two down on the top of the first as that pitch is rocketed up, this, up the middle of the field. Knocked down by. Michael Richardson, but his throw is Aaron over to first to Kale Baker, and that will bring in a run for the Kent State Golden Flashes as they strike here on the top of the first. So we're waiting on whether that was a hit or an error out there from the official scores book. Nothing yet. It was a diving play there for Michael Richardson. Looked like it kind of went in and out of his glove as that ball was rocketed right up the gut right there, and that will go down as an error on Richardson, an E4, but nonetheless, it'll drive in a run there. Now stepping to the box for Kent State, it's Colin Matthews, the center fielder. As that pitch will run a little low and in for a ball. Kelly once again struggling here in the top of the first. He's given up one hit, one error this inning, and one run for Kent State as they have a strike here in the top of the first. Kelly checks his runner over at first base. The pitch, swing and a miss, swung right through that one. They had Matthews, Matthews playing center field on the day here once again, went one for three in yesterday's ball game with an RBI and a double. He was also somewhat responsible for that inside the park home run from A.J. Roush in the bottom of the eighth. As he do for the ball, it got by him and Roush turned on the wheels, rounded all the bases and ended up coming in for an inside the park home run. As the 1-1 pitch runs a little inside there, count will now run 2-1. So one thing Kelly has to do in this ball game is he can't work deep into these counts. He has to stay ahead of his hitters. Yeah, so check Thompson over there at first. The pitch will be swung on and fouled down the third base line, almost into the Bobcat dugout. As the count now evened up at 2-2. So Kelly will try to get out of this inning, only giving up one run here in the top of the first. Seems like we'll have somewhat of an offensive series with this one. As Kent State's already getting their bats going early in this ballgame as Thompson takes out, pitch out, throw down to second base, and it will be not in time. As getting in there safely, Sam Thompson will record a stolen base right there as the ball went in and out of the glove of Michael Richardson there at second base as Minzie's throw was a little low into the dirt, but Richardson tried to knock it down, got away from him, and the count now runs to full. 
Kent State knocking on the door here once again. Runner in scoring position out there at second base, Sam Thompson. Colin Matthews at the dish here. The full count delivery and a swing and a miss. Swung right through that one. Did Matthews, and that will be the end of the top of the first. But Kent State strikes there. Score is 1-0, to zero, and we'll take you to the bottom of the first. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. These days, we're all doing a lot more virtually, which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. We're in the bottom of the first now. As Kent State struck there in the top. Scores one to zero in favor of the Golden Flashes. The Bobcats will step up to the plate now. So we'll read off their lineup one to nine. Leading off is Isaiah Peterson playing center on the day. Batting seconds, Alex Finney being the designated hitter once again this afternoon. Colin Kasperbauer at third. Spencer Harbert in left. Mason Minzie, the backstop for the Bobcats. Michael Richardson playing second base. Kale Baker at first, A.J. Roush in right, and Xavier Hennigas at short once again for the Bobcats. Towing the slab out there for Kent State will be Rocco Bernardina. Bernardina so far on the season on this season has had three appearances, all three appearances, all three of those being starts. Is a 7.11 ERA in 12 and two thirds innings. So we're about to get the bottom of the first going here. Walking up to the plate will be Isaiah Peterson. The on-base machine center fielder for the Ohio Bobcats. Peterson a 358 hitter as he fouls that first pitch back. And yesterday's ball game, Peterson was two for three on the day with an RBI, two walks, and a strikeout. So he's a transfer from Iowa Western for the Bobcats. The delivery from Bernardino goes in there for a strike, and he is now ahead in the count, 0-2. Peterson, a good hitter deep in the counts when it's not in his favor. So he battles up there and takes that one for a ball. Count now 1-2. Peterson is not an easy out for the Bobcats. Will not go down without a fight as that ball is fouled back and out of play there. So far on the season for Peterson, he has walked a total of 11 times that is tied for first for the Bobcats and has only 10 strikeouts on the season. As well as a 500 on base percentage, which is somewhat impressive here in this young season as that pitch runs a little high and the count now even up at twos. Bernadina's delivery. The 2-2. That ball's fouled back once again, and Peterson will stay alive in the box. This is that pitch will be swung right through, and that'll be a strikeout early in this ball game, and Peterson will go down on swings. And one down here as Alex Finney will step to the plate for the Ohio Bobcats. As Casper Bauer, Peterson, and Finney will talk over what the, what's the scouting report there for the pitcher, Bernadina. Bernadina out of Newcastle, Pennsylvania is a freshman standing six feet five inches tall as that'll be in there for a strike. Seems to be working quickly and efficiently so far today is Bernadina. 
as that pitch will be fouled. I think it went off of Alex Finney right there. And he is also in a hole 0-2. Bernadita has started off both of these batters so far in this ball game 0-2. Both Peterson and Alex Finney. As the 0-2 delivery will be chopped and that ball will be out of play. As Thompson sprung up out of the crotch and tried to get that ball foul and did so in time. But he was ready to gun him down at first base. As Finney will stay alive here in the box once again. I have never seen more people ask for a little bit of a colder day here in Athens, Ohio than yesterday. Same overcast weather that we've got. More wind in this game. As the wind's been changing directions left and right. All ball game, but looks to be blown out to right center field. The 0-2 delivery will be skied up into shallow center field. Coming in on it is Matthews, and it'll find his glove for out number two. And the Bobcats will now have to muster something with two outs. As the efficient hitting Colin Kasperbauer will walk up to the plate, hitting an impressive 500 on the season with a 560 OBP and a 548 slugging percentage. With an OPS over 1,000, which is not something you see every day, folks. As Casper Bauer, with his stance that crowds the plate, step into the box. First pitch there from Bernardino will be low for a ball. And that'll be the first batter he's faced that he has not started off with a first pitch strike so far in this ballgame. As Casper Bauer will sky that one into shallow left field. And it'll find the glove of McNamara out there in shallow left field. And that'll be out number three. The Bobcats go one, two, three in their order. Kansas State leads this one. We'll take you to the top of the second. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. These days we're all doing a lot more virtually. Which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. Welcome back here to Bob Ren as we're about to get second inning action underway. After the first frame, Kent State leads this ball game one zip over the Bobcats as Michael McNamara will step up to the plate. He made the last out last inning. McNamara so far on this season, only a 250 average hitter. He's played and started in every single ball game for the Golden Flashes. Yesterday, McNamara went 0 for 2 with two walks and a strikeout on the day. And as the first pitch from Kelly will be in there for a strike. And it'll start off McNamara in his favor. Something that Kelly kind of had some issues with there in the first was getting deep into counts. As he will work his pitch count up, but that one will be in there for a strike and he started off McNamara 0-2. Kelly needs to be efficient with his pitching. Make sure that Pounds the strike zone, gets ahead and counts. Limit that pitch count and go deeper into this ball game. As the 0-2 delivery will go out. Good waste pitch there from Kelly. And the count will now be 1-2 to McNamara. <laughs> and the pitch from Kelly will be rocketed into right field and that'll be a two strike base hit for Michael McNamara. That'll be his first base hit of this entire series. As Kent State's bats seem to be working this afternoon. Early in this ball game. As Mac Timbrook playing second all the day. 
will work his way into the batter's box. Tim Brook did not appear in that first game yesterday, but is getting the start at second this afternoon. So far in the season, Tim Brook is a 152 hitter. He's appeared and started in 10 games. Kelly will now work out of the stretch with McNamara over there at first. That ball will be rocketed in right field and will fall in front of A.J. Roush for another base hit for Kent State. As McNamara thinks otherwise of going to third base, as that will only be a single, he'll stay at second. Runners now at first and second for Kent State as they're knocking on the door once again after two solid singles to right field. It's now the Kent State eight hole. Josh Johnson playing left on the day will step into the box. In yesterday's game, Johnson came in and the designated hitter spot and went a total of 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. As Kelly will work out of the stretch here once again. And that is he'll square to bunt. That bunt will get down down the third base line. Fielded by Casperbauer. He'll throw over to first to Baker. And that'll be an out, but score that a sacrifice. 5-3. As John, Josh Johnson does his job and will bring up Connor Ashby, who will be the designated hitter on the day. He played second base yesterday and did end up driving a run. And for the Kent State Golden Flashes, went one for four with an RBI and three strikeouts. That run being a, take a guess, folks, a single to right field. As Cale Baker has definitely made it a little bit of an adjustment over there, playing up on the grass. Trying to take away that gap and the possible base hit here from Ashby as the 0-1 de or 0 -0 delivery will get in there for a strike. As Kelly once again into a hole. Runners in scoring position here for Kent State on second and third as Connor Ashby here at the plate. McNamara on third. And on second is Mac Timbrook. The 0 1 pitch as that will be rocketed out into right field and will get down in front of A.J. Roush for a base hit. And coming in to score will be Michael McNamara. Took his time though, didn't know if that ball was going to get down. But he'll work his way across the plate, and Kent State will have themselves another run here in the top of the second. Now they extend their lead to two to nothing. Thanks to three singles all to right field. Landing right in front of the right fielder, A.J. Roush. So now the Kent State leadoff, Kyle Jackson, step into the plate as he popped out to left field. And his for a correction to shortstop in his first at bat. As the Bobcats will have a mound visit. And we'll once again get their bullpen up and moving here early into this ball game. And so far in this game, Kent State has four hits and two runs. Well, the Bobcats have committed an error, and that error led to the first run in the first inning for Kent State. But they are once again striking. Here's they have runners on the corners. And they're at their leadoff position here with Kyle Jackson. Jackson, a 333 hitter on the season, a 429 OBP and a 458 slugging percentage. Hasn't gotten off to the best start so far in this series. As he went one for five in yesterday's ball game, and he started off this game 0 for one. Nonetheless, runners will be at the corners here for Kent State. Interested to see what the Golden Flashes will do with this plate appearance from Kyle Jackson. As the mountain visit has now ended, in the open stance, Kyle Jackson is in the box here. The pitch from Kelly, and it'll be a square to bunt. That'll be a squeeze. That ball will get into play. Fielded by Kelly will throw over to Kale Baker at first, and it'll get Jackson in time, but... It will bring in another run for the Kent State Golden Flashes as a squeeze right there, suicide squeeze at that from Kyle Jackson. Will score a run once again for Kent State as now they lead this ball game three to zip over the Bobcats. As Justin Kirby, the right fielder, will work into the box here for the Golden Flashes. Kirby one for one of the day with a double so far in this one. He'll try to put a ball in the green once again and score another run here for Kent State in the top of the second as the pitch from Kelly is a little inside for a ball. Zashby still out there at second base. Kent State, bats are swinging this afternoon. 
They've jumped on Kelly here once again. Take a big lead in this ball game. They're riding a two game losing streak right now as that pitch from Kelly will be in there for a strike. and will not the count up at ones. Bobcats still have two down here in the top of the second. Trying to get out of this jam is Braxton Kelly. Richardson will keep Ashby honest over there at second base. Pitch from Kelly runs inside a little bit again there. A little too far inside and the count now 2-1. Kelly seems to be working the inner half of the plate here. To number 14, Justin Kirby. Once again, playing right field on the day. And the pitch from Kelly. That ball will be rocketed out to center field as Peterson goes back, working back, and he'll hit off the wall out in center field and having another extra base hit will be Justin Kirby. He rounds second and now he's going to third and he will be in there standing with a stand-up triple for Kent State's two-hole. Justin Kirby, an RBI stand-up triple, and that will extend the Golden Flash's lead once again. As that ball was a screamer right up the gut. From Justin Kirby, as Kent State now leads this ball game, four to zip here in the top of the second. They've had four hits in this inning. And they've had three plated runs so far in this one. So now Aiden Longwell will step into the box. First pitch to Longwell will run a little high, and that will be a ball. Longwell 0 for 1 on the day with a ground out and the first. Kent State still has a runner in scoring position after the bases clearing tri triple from Justin Kirby as Longwell will swing right through that one. That'll be in there for a strike. Count now knotted up at ones. Two downs still here for the Bobcats. In the top of the second as Braxton Kelly tries to get out of this jam. And the delivery and another swing and miss there from Aiden Longwell. Longwell, as we mentioned so far, very efficient hitter for the Kent State Golden Flashes. So far in the season, still a above 375 hitter is the pitch. Skied in a shallow left field, and that one will likely find the glove of Spencer Harbert, who comes on. Had to had a little bit of a slow read there, but finally jumped on the ball, and Kent State will strike three, three in the top of the second and will now lead this ball game four zip. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. Welcome back here to Bob Wren as we're in the bottom of the second and the Bobcats still don't have a hit as they trail the Kent State Golden Flashes four zip here after another big inning from Kent State that plated three runs from multiple extra base hits from the Golden Flashes. As Rocco Bernardino still up there on the mound for Kent State. As the Bobcats already have somebody working in their pen. Looks to be a righty out there on the left field line. As they went one, two, three in the first inning. We'll look to possibly either play to run or do something dangerous here in the bottom of the second as the bats need to get going as they're gonna have to keep up with Kent State's offensive surge. As the ever dangerous Spencer Harbert step up to the plate. Yesterday's ball game, Harbert ended up going one for five on the day with two strikeouts. The 2017 Rawlings Perfect Game honorable mention, All-American. So that pitch will be rocketed right back for a foul ball. 
Harbert, not a hitter that usually hits for average, as so far on the season he's hit 225, but still, that slugging percentage of 575 is nothing to scoff at. With a 311 OBP, as that ball will be foul down the third baseline. Harbert has now worked himself into a hole. Bernardino once again getting into favorable counts in this ball game. As he'll deliver the 0-2 to Harbert. That pitch will be a little high, and Harbert will take that one for a ball. Solid waste pitch there for Bernardina. Trying to get a swing and a miss there in that high fastball. As he'll turn, kick, and fire once again to the plate, and that one will be high. And the count now evened up at twos. As Harbert now battling up there in the box, trying to get a pitch that he thinks he can ride. Or possibly an extra base hit here in the bottom of the second for the Bobcats. The 2-2 delivery. That pitch will be low and in the dirt. And Harbert has worked the count now to full. After being down 0-2, he's taken three straight balls here from Rocco Bernardina. Freshman righty for the Kent State Golden Flashes. As now the full count pitch. That ball will be skied. Looks like it's moving out of play. Behind the backstop as it will fall. It'll be a foul ball and staying alive will be Spencer Harbert. On deck for the Bobcats is Mason Minzy, the backstop, who had a solid double off the right center field wall yesterday. As Bernardina's pitch will be in there for strike three, caught the outer half of the plate right there, and Spencer Harbert will go down looking. The Bobcats are still looking for their first hit in this ball game. As Mason Minzy, the catcher, will come to the plate here, Minzy. Rocking a 236 average so far this season with a 295 OBP and a 382 slugging percentage. Menzi has played in all 13 games for the Bobcats and started all those games. As that'll be in there for a strike. It seems like the umpire is giving a little bit off the plate today. A little bit more of a pitcher strike zone rather than yesterday's hitter favored strike zone. Now Minzy's down 0-1 on the count. And that ball will be on the ground and into right field for a base hit. And the Bobcats will have their first base runner of this ball game as Mason Minzy put that one right in between the second baseman, Tim Brook, and the first baseman, Longwell. And now Michael Richardson playing second base on the day for the Bobcats. Waltz up to the plate. In yesterday's game, Richardson went one for four, but that one hit was a wall-scraping home run that went over the left field wall gave the Bobcats a 5-4 lead in the bottom of the eighth. That started an eighth inning rally leading to the 9-4 victory. As the pitch there for Bernardina will get in for a strike on the outer half of the plate. Richardson a 279 hitter so far in the season. He's only grounded into one double play here. as Bernardino will keep Minzy honest over there at first with the attempted pickoff, but Minzy will get back in safely. Bernardino once again. That ball will be swung through and fouled off right into the glove of Sam Thompson. The backstop for the golden flashes on the day. So the count now is 0-2 to Michael Richardson. Bernadina taking his time up there on the mound. And Richardson will take time himself and step out of the box to regain his focus. Runner on first here for the Bobcats in the bottom of the second. 0-2 the count here to Michael Richardson. Pitch from Bernadina, and that ball will be put right back up the middle and will fall right in front of Colin Matthews for a base hit as the Bobcats are now knocking on the door after two singles. And a shallow right and center field from Mason Minzy and Michael Richardson as the first baseman, Kale Baker. Step up to the plate. Baker went 0 for 2 in the game yesterday with two walks. 
as Baker is a grad transfer from the Ole Miss Rebels. Baker so far in the season, .081 batting average. He's had 37 ABs, three hits, one of those being a double. As Bernardino checks his runners, takes his time. Half-hearted swing there as he'll hold back, did Kale Baker, and that will be in there for a ball. Count now 1-0, still one down here in the bottom of the second as the Bobcats have had two Quick hits to the outfield that have dropped right in front of the outfielders. Now they are knocking on the door here, trying to get a one-out rally going. The pitch from Bernardina will work itself a little too far out for a ball. As Baker now works the count 2-0 in his favor. I'm assuming he'll be looking for a pitch to ride right here as he's got a little bit of a hitter's count. We'll try to get the Bobcats back in this ball game as they trail Kansas State 4-0 here in the bottom of the second. High leg kick from Bernadine, and that ball will be fouled right back where it came. For correction, right back over the backstop there is the count now 2-1 to Kale Baker, the first baseman. Mason Minzy out there on second base for the Bobcats. Over at first is Michael Richardson. It's Bernardino once again taking his time. Keeping Minzy honest there at second as that pitch will be swung through and missed by Kale Baker as now Bernardino will even the count up at two. Bernardino trying to battle back here and win this battle with the Bobcats' first baseman. Baker now up on the lines, making sure he can cover the outer half of the plate. And the pitch. That ball will be swung through and fouled back off of the helmet of the catcher, Sam Thompson, and Kale Baker will stay alive here. The on-deck circle for the Ohio Bobcats is A.G. Roush, who the Bobcats will likely want to get up to the plate after his big day yesterday. He is dangerous and could give the Bobcats a lead or tie this ball game up. More so likely it'll be tied. As Baker will take his time, regain his focus. Bernardino, one of those pitchers that works the count, works his time. Something different you don't exactly see in this day and age as they try to speed up this game and pace of play especially with some of the other pitchers that we've seen so far this season. As Bernardino will come off the mound there, won't throw to second base Menzi. As now the sun starts to peek through here at Bob Wren Stadium. Bernardino will come set at the belt here. Checks his runner Menzi out there at second, the delivery, and that ball will be a little too far out off the plate. And the count will now be full to Kale Baker. Although Baker's 081 average isn't the best, he still has got has an on-base percentage of 234. Has 12 strikeouts on the season and eight walks for the Bobcats. That's good for third on the team. As Bernadina gets the signs from his catcher Thompson. The high leg kick. He'll deliver, and that will be a ball high, and Kale Baker will get his ninth walk of the season right there as he worked that count full. And we'll be at first, as now A.J. Roush, especially after his game yesterday, that three for four game with two home runs and a double, as well as five RBIs. We'll try to drive in another ribby right here for the Ohio Bobcats, another Central Ohio product. That is A.J. Roush, 333 hitter so far in the season. Working out of the wine now. It'll be Bernadina. That pitch will be in there for a strike. Caught Roush off guard as he wanted to swing. Just kind of moved his hands a little bit. Didn't get the bat all the way around. The count is now 0-1 to Roush. Bernadina shakes off his catcher, Thompson. Wants the right pitch. I think he got it. 
They'll wind and deliver. Swing through, swung through, correction, and missed by A.J. Roush. See, now is in a hole 0-2. Something in the grass will likely score two runs here for the Bobcats. Michael Richardson has a bit of speed out there on second base. The pitch skied out into center field. Coming in on it is Matthews, and it'll get down for a base hit as they'll throw to second, but Cale Baker will get in there a time, and that'll be a base hit single that drops right in front of the center fielder, Colin Matthews. It's an RBI single there from A.J. Roush, the right fielder, as he now has six RBI so far in this series. As Xavier Hennigas, the shortstop, will step up to the plate here for the Bobcats. Yesterday's game, he went one for, th one for three with a walk and a strikeout. Hennigas so far in the season, a 351 hitter, 385 OBP and a 405 slugging percentage. As Kent State will have a mound visit. Here in the bottom of the second, as the Bobcats have worked to the bases loaded. Thanks to three singles that have dropped all in front of the outfielders. One from Richardson and one from Roush that dropped right in front of the center fielder, Colin Matthews. And another one from Mason Minzy that started off this inning as the Bobcats try to rally here. Down 4-1 now to Kent State as they've had three hits in this inning. As the defensive shortstop, Xavier Hennigas, step into the box. Hennigas has the high school record for fielding percentage. And good old Salem, Indiana. So we're going to the wines, Bernadina. That'll be inside, getting it out of the glove of Sam Thompson for a ball. As Bernadina this inning has had some struggles with working ahead in counts. The first inning. Every single batter he faced, or correction, the first two batters he faced, he worked them down 0-2. As his delivery to Hennigas will be in there for a strike. And the count is now knotted up at once. Base is juiced here for the Bobcats. Richardson's at third, Kale Baker at second. Over there at first is A.J. Roush. That ball will be skied into shallow right center field. Both everybody coming in on it. It'll get down for another base hit as a diving catch is all for naught from Colin Matthews. And the Bobcats will have another bloop single here in the bottom of the second. As the score is now 4-2, to two. the Bobcats still have one down. As we're still waiting on, yes, that will go down as a hit there. Out of the reach of the diving Colin Matthews. As the leadoff, Isaiah Peterson will step into the box. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. Bernardino working out of the wind. That ball will be low for a ball. Seeming to struggle with his control so far in this game. So nobody's out there working in the Kent State bullpen so far as it seems like they'll stick with Bernardina. Peterson will take his time, make sure he's focused. Big at bat right here for the Bobcats. Something in the grass will likely tie this ball game up. After a couple bloop singles from A.J. Roush and Xavier Hennigas. Bernardina's delivery. That ball will be high for a ball and now Peterson has a hitter's count. Peterson had a bases clearing double yesterday. As the wind in the pitch from Bernardina. That ball be skied out to left field, but it will work itself foul and out of play into the Bobcats bullpen. As the Bobcat dugout has worked itself into this ball game. So in the on deck circle is Alex Finney. Who's still looking for his first base hit of this entire series. As the pitch from Bernardina will be swung on and fouled off of the front foot of Isaiah Peterson. Seems to be okay after that one. But it'll take his time out of the box. 
as the count is now evened up at twos. The leadoff hitter, Isaiah Peterson. One down here in the bottom of the second. Bobcats have bases loaded, striking here once again. Trying to get this game knotted up at fours. The pitch from Bernardino. That ball will run a little outside. And the count now runs to full. Three balls, two strikes. One down here in the bottom of the second. Bases loaded for the leadoff hitter and center fielder, Isaiah Peterson. As the Ohio dugout gets loud and the delivery from Bernardino will be swung on and fouled back over our heads. And out of play. Peterson will stay alive here in the box. Bobcats have had four hits in this second inning. Played a two runs so far. After Kent State got off to a hot start. Very different from yesterday's ball game, which started off as a pitcher's duel. And the runs came pouring on later in the ball game. The pitch from Bernardino, that ball will be swung on and will find green grass out there in right center field for Peterson. Fielding is Matthews, rounding third is Hendigas, or correction, Roush, as he'll come in to score, and that will be an RBI double for the leadoff hitter, Isaiah Peterson. So he rocketed that ball right back up into the right center field gap. Matthews came up with it, and that'll score two for the Bobcats as they'll keep this at rally going. So we're tied at four now. After a four-run second inning for the Ohio Bobcats, Kent State still not working anybody out there in the bullpen as they'll stick with Bernadina here. As Alex Finney will come into the box. 0 for 1 on the day with a fly out as that ball will be fouled back and out of play. And Bernadina will get ahead in the count 0-1. Runner still in scoring position here for the Bobcats as Hennigus is over there at third base. And that second is Isaiah Peterson. The pitcher once again, as that ball will be rocketed right back up the middle off of the glove there, Bernadina fielded well by Tim Brook at second base. He'll throw on to first, but a run will come in there and a productive out from Alex Finney as Hennigas will come in to score. And now the Bobcats lead the Golden Flashes 5-4. In the bottom of the second, as the efficient swinging Colin Kasperbauer will come up to the plate. 0 for 1 on the day. With a fly out as the Bobcats have batted around here in the bottom of the second. Bernardino will stay working out of the wind as his delivery will be in there for a strike as he gets ahead of Casper Bauer. Bernardino more efficient when he gets ahead and counts. Has struggled with that here in this second inning. As his second pitch... The Casper Bauer will be skied out of play down the left field line. And we've got us a Bobcat lead 5-4 over the Golden Flashes. The 0-2 delivery from Bernardino will be swung on and driven out into right field for a base hit from Colin Casper Bauer out of the outstretched glove of Mac Timbrook and another run will come in for the Bobcats as Isaiah Peterson comes across the plate. And the Bobcats now lead this ball game 6-4. As Spencer Harbert, who led off this inning, will come back into the box here for a second at-bat this inning. That first at-bat of the inning was a strikeout for Harbert. That pitch will get by the catcher, Sam Thompson, will be a wild pitch. And working his way to second base will be Colin Kasperbauer. Still no movement out there in the pen for the Golden Flashes. As we've got us a 6-4 ball game here early into this one. Runs have been pouring on so far to start this ball game. As the delivery, that ball be swung on into left field. But camping up under it is the left fielder, Josh Johnson, and that will end the second inning. But the Bobcats do strike six on six hits, and they lead this ball game 6-4 now. You are leading, listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network.
Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740 797 4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. Welcome back here to Athens, Ohio. As the Ohio Bobcats lead the Kent State Golden Flashes 6-4 here. Early into this ball game as we're in the top of the third now. As the catcher Sam Thompson stepped to the plate here. This is a seven inning ball game, the first game of a double header this afternoon. Thompson. 0 for 1 on the day with a stolen base as that ball will be in there for a strike. And Braxton Kelly still out there on the mound for the Bobcats. They had some movement out in the bullpen, but now seems to be quieted. As that pitch from Kelly hit his spot, but a little too far off the plate as that'll be in there for a ball count knotted up at ones now. Thompson only came on as a defensive substitution yesterday. As Kelly will deliver, and that ball will be rocketed into center field, tracking it down is Peterson, and he'll catch it on the track. Bump up into the wall, and that'll be out number one for the Bobcats. As that was a good piece there from Sam Thompson. But found the glove of Peterson, and he will now be over two on the day. Now stepping to the plate, be number 13, Colin Matthews. Playing center field once again on the day as he appeals to Bunt and the umpire says yes. That'll be in there for a strike. In his first at bat, Matthews struck out. Pitch from Kelly. Good off speed pitch there, but it'll find its way into the outfield and that'll be a base hit and on the hands. Harbert will come up with it cleanly. And that'll only be a single there. For Colin Matthews, the center fielder for Kent State, as now the shortstop, Colin McNamara, will step up to the plate. One for one on the day. With a single. One down here. It's McNamara's in the box. The Golden Flashes. That first pitch will be in there for a strike from Kelly. McNamara so far in the season has only grounded, or correction, has not grounded into a single double play as the Golden Flashes don't typically do that. Only have four on the season. Very limited numbers there compared to the Bobcats who have eight. Double play balls. That was a good pitch there from Kelly. A little bit off the plate, says the home plate umpire. And the count is now even up at ones. We're in the top of the third here. Both teams have six hits apiece. Bobcats do have an error. Error was charged to Michael Richardson. But they do lead this ball game 6-4 as that ball is high and deep down the left field line. Looks to be moving foul. No, that ball will be gone. As that was a high fly ball from Michael McNamara was moving toward the pole. And I think that wind that's blowing out toward the right center field kept that ball in fair play. And Kent State has now knotted up this ball game at six after a two run blast to left field by the shortstop, Michael McNamara. 
as Mac Timbrook, the second baseman on the day, will step into the box for the Golden Flashes. Timbrook one for one on the day with a single in the second. Is that to be in their first strike? And Kelly will start off ahead in this count. This will be an offensive slugfest so far as both these teams have played in six runs as we're only in the top of the third right now as that was a solid pitch from Kelly but a little high since the home plate umpire count knotted up at ones now. Kent State has seven hits so far in this game as that will be a solid pitch in there for a strike. Found the inner ha half of the plate. And Mac Timbrook, the second baseman, has now worked himself into a hold down one, two in the count. Off to battle now. The pitch from Kelly. That ball hit his spot, but out of play. Fouled down the third base line. As Tim Brook. One, two. Good pitch in on the hands. Menzi liked that one, but the home plate umpire says it was a little upstairs. Count now not up at twos as Tim Brook stays alive in the box. The pitch here. Swing and a miss, and that bat flew right out of his hands. Kelly looked to throw him, a, change it up, and threw him a chair right there. That will be the first strikeout of the day. Correction, second strikeout of the day for Braxton Kelly. So now there's two down here in the top of the third. Number 32, Josh Johnson will come to the plate, who had a sacrifice bunt in his last appearance. Braxton Kelly working out of the wind. That slider is in there for a strike. He's ahead in the count now, 0-1. Kelly, a pitcher that doesn't really specify in velocity, but still has some solid off-speed pitches. He crossed up his catcher, Minzy, on that one. Ran a little high there for a ball. Count knotted up at ones now. Two down here in the top of third. third. This game is knotted up at six here. The pitch into the dirt from there from Kelly. And it's now in favor of Josh Jackson, the left fielder on the day for the Kent State Golden Flashes. So he's hitting under the Mendoza line so far this season as he swings through that one. Swinging a miss there. Count knotted up at twos. So he looks to improve his batting average and his hitting numbers so far this season. As the pitch here from Kelly. Swing and a miss, and that'll be strike three as Kelly strikes out. Johnson right there for out number three, but Kent State strikes two in the top of the third after a two-run blast from Michael McNamara. We're knotted up at six. We're moving to the bottom of the third. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. Welcome back here to the bottom of the third as we're knotted up at sixes here at Bob Wren. As the backstop, Mason Minzy will come up to the plate here for the Ohio Bobcats. Minzy had a single to right field in his last at bat. Still up there working on the mound for Kent State is Rocco Bernardina. This is his first pitch will be a little inside and a little low there for a ball. Count 1 0 here to Mason Minzy. The Bobcats backstop. 
The pitch from Bernardino will be swung on and skied out into left field. Camping up under it is Johnson. It'll find his glove, and that will be out number one here in the bottom of the third for the Bobcats. That's Michael Richardson, who had a hit that blooped right in front of Colin Matthews out there in center field in his last at-bat. We'll try to continue on his one-for-one one day. Bernardina. Still working there on the mound as that ball is once again skied into shallow left field. And it'll find the glove of Michael McNamara, the shortstop for Kent State. Two pitches, two outs so far here. Early in the bottom of the third. As I'm assuming Kale Baker will definitely at least take one pitch here to make sure he doesn't have a three pitch inning from Rocco Bernardino. Kale Baker, the first baseman for the Bobcats. Went a walk there, the bottom of the second. Well, the Bobcats played in six, as that first pitch will be in there for a strike, and it won't be a three-pitch inning. It's Kale Baker now down on the count, 0-1. Bernardina getting ahead here in this inning. When he gets ahead, he has a lot of success, and that's what you see in most pitchers. As that pitch will be low and away for a ball. Solid pitch there from Bernardina. As the count is now knotted up at ones to the Bobcat first baseman. The wind of the pitch there, and that'll be in there for a strike on the outer half of the plate. The count is now 1-2, and Baker's worked himself into a hole, and Bernardina, after giving up six there in the second, has been dealing here in the third. As the Kent State left side of their infield thought that was strike three. The home plate umpire says otherwise, and the count is now evened up at twos. With a two down here in the bottom of the third for your Ohio Bobcats. As Kale Baker looks to continue fighting up there at the plate. Pitch from Bernardina. Skied out into right field. Way up into the air, but it will find the glove of the right fielder, Justin Kirby. And the Bobcats go 1-2-3 in the bottom of the third. Your score is still knotted up at six. We're moving to the top of the fourth. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. We're here on the banks of the Hawking River at Bob Wren Stadium in Athens, Ohio for some action between the Ohio Bobcats and the Kent State Golden Flashes. As this game is knotted up at six, it's been an offensive slugfest here as we're on the top of the fourth is due up here for Kent State. They will go 9-1-2. As Connor Ashby will be the first batter in the box here, the designated hitter on the day for Kent State. They'll try to get to the top of their order once again. Ashby, one for one on the day with an RBI. It was a single to right field. Is Braxton Kelly still out there for the Bobcats? That pitch will be off the plate in the left-handed batter's box and there for a ball. It's Ashby in his open stance here. Gets the 1-0 delivery in there for a strike. Count at ones now. No movement out there in the bullpen for the Bobcats for either team to be exact. They let their starters go as that ball is chopped up the middle, fielded by Hendigas around second base. He'll throw to first to Kale Baker and he'll get the out in time as Ashby will ground out there to Xavier Hendigas. One of the better shortstops defensively, I would say, in the MAC. It's now the leadoff, Kyle Jackson playing third once again on the day. Will waltz up to the plate. 
Jackson working on an 0 for one day with a sacrifice and an RBI so far. That pitch will be in there for a ball from Braxton Kelly. And Kelly, unlike Bernadina, is a pitcher that works quickly. So he jumped right back there, right on the mound. Kelly's pitch. Be in there for a strike, and the count now at ones. It's been a lot of runs so far in this ball game. Both teams combining for a total of 12. Seven hits for Kent State, six for the Bobcats. Bobcats have one air so far in this ball game. As the 1-1 one -one delivery from Braxton Kelly will work low. Count now runs a 2-1. To the third baseman, Kyle Jackson with his open stance. The pitch, swing and a miss. As Kelly took a little something off that pitch. And way out in front of that one was Kyle Jackson. As Jackson will now choke up on his bat a little bit. He'll go more defensive with his stance and more defensive with his swing. The pitch, it'll run. No, it'll get part of the plate. That'll be strike three. On the inner half there, as a strikeout looking for the leadoff, Kyle Jackson. Now Justin Kirby work himself into the box here for the Kent State Golden Flashes, working on a two for two day with a double, a triple, and an RBI. It's his last hit was a rocket. Right up the gut off the center field wall, 405 out there, dead center. The right fielder will step in the box, and the first pitch will be in there for a strike. Braxton Kelly's having a good top of the fourth here as he's trying to go an inning without allowing a run as he allowed one in the first, three in the second, and two in the third. Which totals six here for Kent State as that ball will be skied down the right field line and out of play. It's way ahead in the count now. Will be Braxton Kelly to Justin Kirby, the right fielder for Kent State. Kelly's ready to roll here as Kirby resets himself. And we'll battle now 0-2. That pitch will be skied out of play. Once again, staying alive is Justin Kirby. Kelly took something off on that one. He's got a good arsenal. Solid slider and a good changeup that he will throw very often. As the pitch here from Kelly. Swung on and driven out, and a good play there from Xavier Hennigas as he scooped that one up one hop. Showing the leather right there, he'll throw on to Kale Baker for out number three as we're still knotted up at six. We're moving to the bottom of the fourth. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases and under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! We're in the bottom of the fourth. As A.J. Roush steps up to the plate here for the Ohio Bobcats. Roush has hit well so far in this series against the Golden Flashes. Still up on the mound there for Kent State. It's Rocco Bernardina. Now in his fourth inning of work. We're still knotted up at six years. He'll take his time with his delivery. And a swing and a miss there from A.J. Roush. Swung right through that one. Now drove in a run in his last at bat as he blooped a single in to center field. That pitch will be driven out to left field, and that one will get down in front of the left fielder, Josh Jackson. His rounding first hard was A.J. Roush, but he'll decide to stay as Roush now. A total of five for six in this series against Kansas State with six RBIs. 
Xavier Hennigas will come to the plate here for the Bobcats, who also had a bloop single to the right center field gap. His first at bat. Hennigas so far this season has a pickoff attempt over there to first and keep A.J. Roush honest. But Hennigas so far this season has not grounded into a double play. As if he puts this ball on the ground, it'll have to get through the infield. I want a double play here for the Bobcats. As he'll score a bunt, will be in there for a strike. As he pulled back in time, but the home plate umpire says, nope, that caught a bit of the zone. And he gets it now down at one. As squaring the bunt, was Hennigus early there, but a pickoff attempt to first. We all for not as A.J. Roush gets back in safely. Bernardino will get a sign from his catcher once again. Wouldn't be surprised if Hennigus, as there he goes, squaring the bunt. So lay down that bunt. Good bunt right there, fielded by Bernardino. He'll flip on to the first baseman Longwell, and that'll go down as a sacrifice. 1-3 bunt there for the nine-hole Xavier Hennigus. The Bobcats now have a runner in scoring position as their leadoff, Isaiah Peterson, will come to the plate. As Peterson had a shot in his last at bat, a two RBI double. He's working on a one for two day with that said double and a strikeout so far is now coming to the mound to make sure he's got the signs right. OB catcher Sam Thompson as Kent State has a lefty now working in their bullpen. Nobody up there milling around for the Bobcats though. As Thompson now walks his way back to the plate. As him and Bernardina need to make sure they got their signs ready as now the Bobcats have A.J. Roush out there on second base. As Peterson will come to the plate and will try to drive in another run here in this at bat. As he'll take time in Kent State's one of their coaches is out of the dugout. As that is their associate head coach, Mike Burbeck. He's an Akron alum in 85. He's been with the Golden Flashes for a while, especially as their associate head coach. And he's been with the program. As he's just going to talk it and mill it over with the young righty, Rocco Bernardino. Good name of that, Rocco Bernardino. Sounds like a true baseball player right there, I will say. Baseball or hockey player. That's a name and a half, and I think we're going to have a pitching change, as that will be all for Rocco Bernardino. And we'll take a break here with this pitching change. We'll be back for some action here in the bottom of the fourth as Bobcats have a runner on second. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat football. Go for good times. Jumpstart your day at the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Athens. Enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book your next visit to Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com. We're about back here after a pitching change there. As Kent State has taken their starter, Rocco Bernardino, out of the game here. So he only worked three and a third so far in this ball game as they'll bring on the tall lefty, a redshirt junior standing six feet four inches tall, Benjamin Crookshank, 
Number 33 out of the pen here for Kent State. So far on the season for Crookshank. He has a 10.13 ERA, an 0-2 win-loss record. He's appeared in three games for the Golden Flashes, started one of those games in eight innings pitched, giving up eight hits, nine runs, all of those being earned, 12 walks, and nine strikeouts. So far in the season for the Golden Flashes, as they'll try to get a little bit of a matchup here as he'll face the lefty, Isaiah Peterson. Peterson working on a one for two day here with a double. So now it's really overcast here. Started off the day, looked like it was gonna be a sunny day here at Bob Wren, but now the wind, a little bit of cold has worked itself in here on this Saturday afternoon as the pitch from Crookshank will be low and away to Peterson for a ball. Runner out there on second base is A.J. Rauch. Had a two for two day so far for the Bobcats. Very effective series. As the Bobcats have seven hits and so does Kent State. As the pitch there from Crookshank will be low and away and a little too far off the plate there for a ball. So now we've got a hitter's count here to Isaiah Peterson. Peterson trying to continue his effective season of getting on base, being the leadoff of the Ohio Bobcats. It's a pitch there from Crookshank. Does that ball be rocketed out of play? Down the first base line. So now the wind's starting to pick up a lot here at Bob Wren Stadium. Blown out to right center field, has so far for most of this ball game. Let's get a little chilly here. As Crookshank will check his runner over there at second base. The pitch, that'll be in there for a strike. The Bobcat faithful does not like that strike call one bit. Nonetheless, it'll be knotted up at twos now to the Bobcat leadoff hitter. So he'll try to keep this inning alive it is Isaiah Peterson. The 2-2 delivery, good off-speed pitch there from Crookshank, but it'll be low and away in the dirt for a ball as the count is now full to the center fielder, Peterson. Peterson, like we said, won't go down without a fight here. Being the leadoff for the Bobcats. The full count delivery. That'll run inside and plunk Peterson. He's not happy with that one. As it will waltz down to first base and the Bobcats now have two base runners here in the bottom of the fourth trying to get this lead back. And now number 15, Alex Finney. Alex Finney will come to the plate here. The designated hitter this afternoon. Working on an 0 for 2 day with an RBI. Or correction, 0 for 1 day with a sack fly. There is a pitch. Going to be in there for a strike. Count 0 1 here to the designated hitter, Alex Finney. Or correction, he had the squeeze attempt there in the second. That scored another Bobcat, because that's where the run, his RBI came in, as he'll spit on that one. He'll peel down, and they say he went over there on that. First base umpire says yes. He's worked himself into a hole now, 0-2. One down here. The Bobcats have two runners on here in the bottom of the fourth, the pitch. Swing and a miss, swung right through that one, didn't Finney. And he'll go down on strikes one, two, three. As Benjamin Crookshank records his first out and will face the left-handed hitter, Colin Kasperbauer. Kasperbauer leading the Bobcats in average so far this season, and he's working on a one for two day. An RBI single in the second.
As he'll work his way into the box. And he'll stare, stare down. Benjamin Crookshank, the tall lefty. For the golden flashes. So he'll take his time. Step out of the box. Recollect his focus. So Crookshank took his time to get the signs from his catcher, Sam Thompson. Kent State pitchers today seem to be taking their times up there on the mound more so than the Bobcat pitchers. Pitcher at that. That pitch will run inside and it will get by Sam Thompson all the way to the backstop. As now the Bobcats have two runners in scoring position here for their three hole Colin Casper Bauer. Here in the bottom of the fourth, so we're only playing seven in this first ball game. Second game will be nine. So now the wind blowing looks to be straight out to left field now. So it's switched from right center to left. As Kirkshank will come set at the belt. The high kick and that ball will be away. Off the plate, 2-0 now the count in favor of Colin Casper Bauer, the third baseman for the Bobcats. As he'll look to strike here in the bottom of the fourth. Score knotted up at six. Both teams have seven runs. One air on the day for the Bobcats. None for the flashes as that pitch will run inside. But it'll be caught there by Sam Thompson. And this is where Kent State might get into dangerous territory. It's in the on-deck circle is Spencer Harbert for the Bobcats. The 3-0 pitch. Got to be in there for a strike, and it'll now work 3-1. To the Bobcat third baseman. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Runners in scoring position. A.J. Roush stands on third. And Isaiah Peterson out there on second. The pitch. Got to be in there for a strike. Casper Bauer thought it was a little inside, but now the count runs full. Casper Bauer will now have to battle. Hasn't swung the bat one time here in this at bat. This is a big pitch right here. The kick and delivery. That ball run high, and it'll be ball four to Colin Casper Bauer, and Crookshank will walk the bases loaded for the free swinging Spencer Harbert. The power left fielder. Try to bust this game wide open for the Bobcats. So he'll face the lefty Crookshank. So far on the day, Harbert 0 for 2. With a strikeout and a flyout. The pitch swung on and that'll be driven up the middle and it'll be speared by McNamara. He'll flip on to second base and it will be in time. What a play. Showing the leather out there from Michael McNamara for Kent State as he barely Got Casper Bauer out in time, and we're still knotted up at six. We're moving to the top of the fifth. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast. We're on the top of the fifth for game one of this doubleheader here on the Saturday afternoon in Athens, Ohio. The Ohio Bobcats take on the Kent State Golden Flashes. Knotted up at six here as the Bobcats were knocking on the door with bases loaded. But a great play by the shortstop, Michael McNamara. Kept Kent State in this ball game, knotted up at six as the first baseman. Aiden Longwell will come to the plate here for the Golden Flashes. 
Longwell 0 for 2 in the day with a ground out and a fly out. And still up there on the bump for the Bobcats is Braxton Kelly. The first pitch will be in there for a strike. <laughs> Kelly in his fifth inning of work so far this afternoon as he's gone four strong and given up six runs and seven hits for the Bobcats. The pitch slows it down. Change up action right there, but it'll go into the dirt. Count now evened up at ones. As the delivery there will be fouled back and out of play from Longwell, who struggled so far in this series as he's only really gone one for six so far. With a strikeout and a double against the Bobcats as that pitch will run a little high and out. And it'll be a ball. It's at twos for the first baseman, Aiden Longwell. Longwell out of Maslin, Ohio. That pitch will be flown out into left field. Tracking it down is Harbert. Almost onto the track, and he'll make that catch for out number one. That'll be a fly out for Aiden Longwell. Now the four hole for Kent State will step to the box. Sam Thompson, who is playing behind the dish in this ball game. Giving Mickness a rest this afternoon. At least for game one, that is. The first pitch will run a little out there for a ball. It's Thompson over two on the day. Reached on air. And the first that drove in the first run as that pitch will be lined over the glove of Colin Kasperauer in there for a base hit. As Thompson rounds first, now digging for second, and he'll get there standing. Or no, he slides into second base there for a double down the third baseline. And Kent State once again has runners in scoring position here in the top of the fifth. As we get deeper into this ball game, Braxton Kelly's going to have to keep this game close. Now the Bobcats have two righties now working out in their pen. Now stepping to the plate will be number 13, Colin Matthews, playing center field on the day for the Kent State Golden Flashes. The pitch from Kelly, and that ball will be lined out in the left field. And a good sliding catch there from Spencer Harbert as he read that one right off the bat. Made a good sliding catch out there, and it'll be two down now for the Bobcats as Michael McNamara will step to the box. And in his last at-bat, he had a two-run wall scraper to left field that was a high fly ball and got out of Bob Wren. And that nodded this game up at six in the top of the third. And we'll see if he can drive in another run here for the Golden Flashes as he's working on a two-for-two two day. As Kelly will come set here at the chest. As that pitch will be lined up the middle, fielded by Hendigas, speared that one, and it'll be thrown on to Kale Baker, and the Bobcats will get out of the top of the fifth with no run scored. We're still nodded up at six. We're moving to the bottom of the fifth. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. 
Welcome back to Bob Wren Stadium. We're here in the bottom of the fifth. Your score is still knotted up at sixes between the Ohio Bobcats and the Kent State Golden Flashes. It's now on, in, on for a second inning of work. It is the tall lefty for Kent State. Benjamin Crookshank as he came in and stopped the Bobcats from scoring a run last inning. As due up here for Ohio will be Mason Minzy, Michael Richardson, and Cale Baker as they'll go five, six, seven here. Mason Minzy working on a one for two day with a fly out and a single as the switch hitting Minzy will come to the box and face the left-handed Crookshank. As working out of the stretch here is Crookshank. His first pitch will be a little out and up for a ball to the backstop for the Bobcats, Mason Minzy. As the second pitch will be in there for a strike. Minzy just wants confirmation of where that's at on the plate. The count is even at ones. As Crookshank will deliver. That ball will be up and out. Counting out a 2-1. For Mason Minzy. The pitch there from Crookshank will be fouled back and out of play. As the wind gusts start to pick up here once again. And Bob Wren Stadium is now the wind's blowing. Looks like to be out straight to dead right field. As it's gone from left, right center to right now. As that pitch is in there for strike three. Caught the outer half of the plate. And Minzy will go down looking which will bring up the second baseman, Michael Richardson, for the Bobcats. Richardson so far on the day, working on a one for two day, with a bloop single and a fly out. This is staggered stance in the box here. The pitch from Crookshank, he'll square to bunt, but that ball will be up for a ball to Michael Richardson. As no defensive adjustments here, just a little bit of a more step in there from Jackson over at third base as that ball is up and out for ball number two there for Michael Richardson. As the pitch from Crookshank below in the dirt for another ball. It's 3-0 count here for Michael Richardson. Not sure he'll get the green light here on 3-0. As the pitch from Crookshank. Be up and out for a ball and a four-pitch walk there for Michael Richardson. So Bobcats have a base runner here in the bottom of the fifth. As the first baseman, Kale Baker, will come to the box. 0 for 1 on the day with a walk and a fly out. Kale Baker so far on the season has yet to ground into a double play. It's over there first is Michael Richardson. The pitch swung on, half-hearted swing over to third base for Kyle Jackson. He'll throw, gets the out of second, and at first, Baker will beat it in time. That'll go down as a fielder's choice as Jackson threw on to Timbrook who threw on to Longwell, but Baker gets to first in time and will avoid the double play. Now the Bobcats have two down here. And A.J. Roush will work himself into the box once again. Who has had the Flash's number this series. On five for six so far with three extra base hits. Two of those being home runs. He's working on a two for two day with an RBI. As he'll try to keep this inning alive here for the Bobcats in the bottom of the fifth. 
The pitch. Work low and in the dirt. Not exactly sure that Kale Baker is a speed threat over there at first base. He didn't really look to run on that pitch. A.J. Roush at the plate. Swung on and missed there from Roush. This count is now even at ones. For the Bobcat right fielder. As the pitch here. Crookshank will work into the dirt and he'll get by the catcher Thompson. And working his way to second base will be Kale Baker. Now the Bobcats have a runner in scoring position with two down here for A.J. Roush, who's came up clutch multiple times so far in this series. 2-1 count here. Two down in the bottom of the fifth. Score still knotted up at sixes. It's been that way since the top of the third. It's the pitch here from Crookshank. Swung on and missed. Once again from Roush, he wanted that fastball, wanted to elevate that fastball. But he'll have more life here. Two down, two strikes, two balls here to A.J. Roush. Crookshank will come set at the belt. The delivery, Roush wanted that one but thought otherwise and will hold back and the count now runs to full. This will be a big pitch here to A.J. Roush and the on-deck circle is the shortstop, Xavier Hindegas. Or the Ohio Bobcats. The pitch here from Crookshank. Fouled back off the handle there from A.J. Roush. As he'll stay alive here in the box and we'll keep the count full. Indigus on deck. We're going to one for one day with a sacrifice and an RBI. As they'll take time here. It looks like a righty still out there working for the Bobcats. Nobody out in Kent State's bullpen. Crookshank's pitch. Swung on. Swing the spear right there as he got him chasing out of the zone. And A.J. Roush will go down on strikes. We'll move to the sixth now. Still knotted up at six. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two mangoes. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch, Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome here to Bob Wren Stadium. We're in the top of the six now as the Bobcats have made a pitching change as now into the ball game will be number 27, Colin Sells. This is his last appearance. He came in the game against Marshall. And so far on the season, Sells has a 284 ERA, 1-0 pitching record. He's made five appearances, all of those being out of the pen. One save in six and one-third innings. Giving up eight hits, five runs, two of those being earned, four walks, and one strikeouts on the season as he'll try to keep this game knotted up at six. As now for Kent State, they'll go 7-8-9 here this inning as Mac Timbrook will be in the box here. Timbrook working on a one-for-two day with a strikeout and a base hit. Sells a workout of the line. The pitch. 
Swung on a foul back out of play. Sells is out of Lancaster, Ohio. He's a senior standing six feet four inches tall as that pitch will be right back up the middle and he'll get past the glove of Michael Richardson for a base hit as Tim Brooks starts off the top of the sixth with a base hit right where it came from. And Kent State has a base runner here once again. As now Josh ja Johnson will step to the plate here once again for the Golden Flashes working on a no for one day. The sacrifice and a strikeout. The Bobcats will try to take the bun away here as Casper Bowers playing in on the grass. As Sells will come set here for the Bobcats. The pitch taking off there and a good hit and run action right there as rounding third, rounding second correction will be Tim Brook and he'll get to third as a great execution from the hit and run there from Joss Johnson. As taken off and that pitch was Tim Brook and he hit it backside, slapped it right there for a single. And now we've got runners on the corners as Kent State's knocking on the door here in the top of the sixth. As Connor Ashby will step to the plate here, working on a one for two day. Already has an RBI single to right field. So far in this ball game for Kent State and in the on deck circle is their leadoff, Kyle Jackson. So far on the season for Ashby, he's had two RBIs, three if you count the one from today, and he had one yesterday. This pitch from Sells, it'll be a squeeze attempt. As Ashby went on that one, looked like more of a safety squeeze, is not gunning for home there, was Timbrook on third base. Runners at the corners here as Kent State looks to strike here in the top of the sixth. As if they were to score here, they would only be six outs away from taking game one of this doubleheader here this afternoon. The wind has started to die down a little bit here. Bob Bren blowing out to left field once again. As the pitch from Sells taking off at first is Jackson. They'll fake the throw, or Johnson correction. They'll fake the throw to second. And that'll be a stolen base for Josh Johnson. Now Kent State's got two runners in scoring position. Tim Brook on third and Johnson on the second. As Connor Ashby will try to drive them both in as the Bobcats end on the grass. All of their infield here trying to take away this run. Pitch from Sells. Check swing, but it'll hold on that one as it goes in the dirt. Count runs to 2-1 now to Connor Ashby. Sells gets the sign from his catcher, Minzy. The 2-1. In the dirt once again, blocked by Minzy. And it will now be 3-1 in favor of Ashby. As Kyle Jackson in the on-deck circle, working on an 0 for 2 day with an RBI and a strikeout. As well as a sacrifice. As the 3-1 from Sells. That'll be in there for a strike. And he'll make the count full now. And he'll try to get an out here to Connor Ashby. As Colin Sells will try to work out of this jam that he's created himself here in the top of the sixth. So check both the runners for full count delivery. That'll be below the knees and a ball four. And a walk there to the second baseman, Connor Ashby. As now the bases are loaded for Kent State. 
as their leadoff third baseman, Kyle Jackson, will step to the box. Already has one RBI so far this afternoon. And we'll try to find some green right here, or maybe even a deep fly ball. We'll score one. Now the corners are in here for the Bobcats. Up the middle, they're going to take away the ground ball double play as that first pitch will be in there from a strike to Jackson. Kyle Jackson out of Bowling Green, up Ohio. Up there in the northwest corner of the state. As the pitcher from Sells be off the plate for a ball. Base is loaded here in the top of the sixth. Score is knotted up at six. Kent State's working on a 10-hit ball game. Bobcats have seven and one air. As the high leg kick in the delivery, a little too high there to Jackson. Now the count favors Jackson, 2-1. The open stance, Jackson. Will stare down Sells. The pitch swung on and off of the glove of Kale Baker. He'll stay with it, gets away from him, and that'll be a base hit coming around to score. Will be two runs for the Kent State Golden Flashes as Mac Timbrook and Josh Johnson will come around, and Kent State now leads the Bobcats 8-6 in the top of the sixth. As that one just barely went out of the reach and off the glove of the first baseman, Cale Baker. So he made a great defensive effort on that ball. Little ricochet there, and that'll go down as a hit. And the scores book. As Justin Kirby will come to the plate now for Kent State. Kirby's working on a two for three day with a double, a triple, and one RBI. So far, and we'll try to make that a three for four here as he'll square it a bunt, and that'll be down as Sells will field it fall a little bit. He'll regain himself, forearm fake, and that'll be a bunt single as Sells fell on the turf there. And the bases will be loaded once again for Kent State. As their three hole will come to the plate now, Aiden Longwell playing first base this afternoon. Longwell's working on an 0 for three game though. So far this season, Longwell has yet to ground into a double play. And the Bobcats just need an out here at the top of the sixth. So they'll have a meeting here on the mound to make sure that Sells is calmed down. As he still has yet to record an out here in the top of the sixth. As Kent State's come alive here later in this ball game. As now if they can just shut down the Bobcats there. Six outs away from taking game one of this doubleheader. As the first game will be seven. And the second game will be nine. As they'll take their time up there. It's got a little chilly here at Bob Wren. The sun was peeking out earlier before the game started, and it's just kind of been overcast ever since we started playing this afternoon. As the Bobcats will head back to their positions after that mound visit. As the score now is 8-6 in favor of Kent State. As they lead your Ohio Bobcats here in the top of the sixth. No outs, bases juiced here for the first baseman, Aiden Longwell. As Colin Sells is still up there on the mound for your Ohio Bobcats. The pitch. That'll be a little off the plate for a ball. That's something that Sells has struggled with so far here in this ball game is getting, getting ahead in counts. He's come out of the pen and just struggled. 
with getting up on these Kent State hitters. So he'll take his time and get the signs from his catcher, Minzy, and Longwell will step out of the box and regain his focus. As Sells will get the signs from his battery mate, Minzy. The pitch. Swung on, lifted, looped out into shallow right field. That ball will get down for a base hit and fair play. Fielded by Roush, and that will be an RBI bases clearing triple for just, or correction, it will be a single only. As Longwell didn't advance there on that one, just blooped it right in, and that will be a two RBI single. As Kirby will advance to third, and they'll have runners on the corners here for the catcher, Sam Thompson. Kent State now has 12 hits on this ball game. Ohio has seven. Two errors on the day for the Bobcats. As Sells continue here. Lefty working in the pen for the Bobcats. He'll attempt to pick off over at first. Try and get Longwell. In that last at bat, that was Longwell's sixth hit, or correction, second hit of this series. So he now has a double, and that's single. That is his first RBI, first two RBIs for this series. As another pickoff attempt over at first. Sells will try to keep him honest over there. As Sam Thompson has still yet to see a pitch from Colin Sells. Thompson working on a one for three day with a stolen base, reached on air, and a double. That ball was in the dirt there to Thompson. The count is now 1 0. Sells, a pitcher that takes his time a lot more than Braxton Kelly, who started the ball game for the Bobcats. If your score would, would to hold the way it is, Sells would be the pitcher to get the loss in that column. As he throws a ball there, count now 2 0. To the Kent State backstop, Sam Thompson. No outs here. The pitch, low and in the dirt. And the count is now 3-0. As Thompson looks into the dugout. To get the signs. Looks a little perplexed. Looking to the, okay, now he shakes his head. As Sells will get the signs and deliver. That'll be in there for a strike. Count now 3 1. As Sells still yet to record an out here. In the top of the sixth. Giving up four runs and giving Kent State a comfortable lead now. With the pitch swung on and driven out into center field. Going back now is Peterson. He'll make the catch before the track, but it will be a sack fly. Is coming in to score will be Justin Kirby. And that will extend Kent State's lead to 11-6 to now here in the top of the sixth. As Sells has finally recorded an out. And Colin Matthews will come to the plate here for Kent State. Matthews so far this afternoon working on a one for three day with a strikeout and a flyout. As that will be all for Colin Sells' day as the Bobcats are going to make a pitching change here and we'll step aside. We're in the top of the sixth. The score is 11-6, to six, and you are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network.
Plan your next visit to stand up and cheer for your Ohio Bobcats in Athens County, Ohio. Visit AthensOhio.com, the best resource for where to eat, where to stay, where to shop, and where to play. Athens County is home to countless trails and outdoor activities. Enjoy mountain biking, kayaking, rock climbing, and hiking. Find your own adventure. Cruise the Hawk Hawking Adena Bikeway. Mountain bike the Bailey's Trail System. Hike trails less traveled at Stroud's Run State Park. Or ride nine thrilling motorcycle routes on Ohio's Windy Nine. We can't wait to see you in Athens County, Ohio. The road to a championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. The Bobcats have made a pitching change as now Adam Beery enters the ball game here in the top of the sixth. So far in the season, Beery has yet to allow a run. He's made two appearances, a 0-0 win-loss record. He's pitched two and two-thirds, only given up one hit, one walk, and one strikeout. So far on the season is the lefty out of Ravenna, Ohio. as he'll face the right-handed center fielder, Colin Matthews. As a pickoff attempt over there at first, will be all for naught. Getting back in safely will be Longwell. Matthews working on the one for three day with a strikeout, a flyout, and a single. The pitch, it'll be fouled almost into the Bobcat dugout, just off the top of it. Ends up over there. In this top of the sixth, Kent State's put up a crooked five. So they now lead this ball game 11 to six. After a rough outing from Colin Sells, the righty out of Lancaster, Ohio. The pitch from Beery. It'll be in the dirt. Good block there from Minzy. And the count will now be even at ones. So the Bobcats have one out here. In the top of the sixth, looking for the double play ball here to Colin Matthews. Matthews so far in the season only has one grounded in a double play as that ball was skipped in front of Hennigas. He'll toss over to Mitch Richardson and now he'll have two double play balls on the season as that'll be a tailor-made 6-4-3 double play and the Bobcats will get out of the top of the sixth. But they do give up five in that top of the inning as they'll be down 11-6 now. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We're here in the bottom of the sixth, and Kent State is six outs away from taking game one here. As on for another inning of work will be the lefty, Crookshank. As the shortstop, Xavier Hennigas will step into the box here. For the Bobcats, one for one day with a RBI and a sacrifice. So foul that one off. We'll be down on the count now, 0-1. Kent State at a good top of the six, put up a five spot. As they just hit Colin Sells well. And have blown this ball game open. That pitch will be low in there for a ball. 
Good pitch there from Benjamin Crookshank. Crookshank, a lefty out of Fairview Heights, Illinois. A Missouri State transfer. That pitch will be in there for strike. It's count now 1 2 in favor of Crookshank. The pitch. Fouled back from Hendigus, and he'll stay alive. As this game has been a slugfest, to say the least. As the Bobcats put up a six spot in the bottom of the second, I gave them a 6-4 lead, but have yet to score since then. Kent State's gonna, done a good job of keeping them limited as Kent State wanted that strike three call there on the corner. But it'll be a ball out, says the umpires. The count now knotted up at twos. Crookshank's delivery. Fouled back, and Hennigus will stay alive here once again. Kent State, 11 runs on 12 hits. No errors in this ball game. Well, the Bobcats have six runs on 11 hits and two errors in this ball game. The first error coming from Richardson in the first. That put up that one spot in the first for Kent. And that pitch will go a little high for a ball. And Hennigus will now work the count full. So he'll try to reach base here as the Bobcats need a rally here in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch, and that'll be a ball out, and Hennigus will draw a walk. Good efficient at bat right there. So now the lead off, Isaiah Peterson will strut his way into the box. Working on a one for two day with a strikeout, two RBIs, a hit by pitch, and a double. as Peterson now leads that category of hit by pitch with six now total on the season after being hit earlier in this ball game. The pitch from Crookshank and that'll be fouled back and out of play. Bobcats need base runners here in the bottom of the six if they want to keep this game close. They still will have one more opportunity to hit after this inning. As this first game of this doubleheader will be only a seven inning one. This pitch there will find the outer half of the strike zone. And the count now 0-2 to the leadoff Isaiah Peterson. Kirkshank will come set at the belt. And the 0-2 delivery will be a little too far into the dirt and off the plate for a ball. 1-2 now to count. Good waste pitch there from Benjamin Crookshank. Bobcats have a runner on first here. No outs. We're in the bottom of the sixth. As it'll be a pitch here. And that'll be high for a ball. Even up at twos to Isaiah Peterson. The man patrolling center field this afternoon. When now blowing out straight to left field, the pitch. That'll be lifted out into center, tailing toward the glove of Colin Matthews, and he will make the out, and that'll be one down here in the top, or correction, the bottom of the sixth. As now we're going to have a pinch hitter here for the Ohio Bobcats. Number nine, Harrison Johnson. This will be Johnson's ninth, or correction, eighth plate appearance of the season as he'll come in for Alex Finney. And so try to commit some lefty on lefty crime here against Benjamin Crookshank. Johnson, a 200 hitter on the season. He's played in four games, started in one of those. 429 OBP, as he's only hit singles so far. So he'll swing through that one for strike number one. Johnson out of Mason, Ohio. His father, Scott, played football at Ball State, and his mother, mother Jennifer, Played field hockey at Eastern Michigan. 
There was a pickoff attempt over there, all for naught. Santa gets to get back in safely. Pistol Johnson will be fouled back. And it'll now be 0-2 count here. To the lefty swinging redshirt freshman. Spurkshank will deliver. Good pitch. It'll be in the dirt, though. As the count now runs to 1-2. Johnson has yet to ground and do a double play this season. The pitch, it'll be high, up for a ball. This count's now knotted up in twos. One down here in the bottom of the sixth. For the pinch hitter, Harrison Johnson. And the pitch from Crookshank. Swing and a miss, and that'll be strike number three as... He'll throw Johnson a chair and he'll be sat down on strikes. As the third baseman, Colin Kasperbauer, will come to the plate here. Working on a one for two day with an RBI and a walk so far this afternoon. So look to maintain that average, which still remains at the 500 mark. Pitch from Crookshank. Foul back and out of play there from Casper Bauer. And the Bobcats have just kind of struggled here this afternoon after putting up that six spot in the second. Haven't been able to play any other runs. Had bases loaded there in the middle innings, but couldn't play one there either as Crookshank will deliver, and that ball will be fouled back and out of play. And now down 0-2 in the count is Colin Casper Bauer, the third baseman for the Bobcats. Hennigus let off this inning with a walk. Still has yet to score or move anywhere else besides first base. That pitch will be in there. Strike three looking to Casper Bauer. And Crookshank will sit him down as the score remains 11-6. to six And we're moving to the top of the seventh. You're listening to Ohio Baseball and the Ohio Sports Network. Warehouse Tire in Athens is your locally owned and operated auto and truck tire center. At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. We're here at the top of the seventh in Athens, Ohio, on the banks of the Hawking River as the Kent State Golden Flashes need your Ohio Bobcats 11-6 here as the shortstop Michael McNamara will come to the plate here. Still up there on the mound, Adam Beery. First pitch there to McNamara will be in the dirt for a ball. McNamara is working on a two-for-three day with two RBIs. And a wall-scraping home run in the third that nodded this game up at six. So that pitch will be in the dirt. As it stands right now, the pitcher who would get the win this afternoon would be Benjamin Crookshank. And the pitcher who would get the loss would be Colin Sells for the Bobcats. 
as Beery's delivery will be rocketed right back up the middle, and that'll be another base hit there for Michael McNamara, the shortstop for the Golden Flashes. As now stepping to the plate will be the seven hole, Mac Timbrook, playing second base on the afternoon. Working on a two for three game hims himself, correction, with a strikeout. So far, Tim Brook. Oh, square to bunt. A little bit of a drag bunt, but it'll get foul. It's Tim Brook so far. It's grounded into one double play, one of the four flat golden flashes. It has done that so far this season. As we'll get the signs from the dugout. As Beery's delivery will be lined in the right field for a base hit. Roush will keep it in front. It is cut off man at Hendegas. And McNamara will remain at second base as that'll be a base hit. And improving to a three for four day will be Mac Timbrook. It's now Josh Johnson. We'll come to the plate here, working on a one for two day with a stolen base, a sacrifice, and a strikeout. Playing left field this afternoon for Kent. As Beery will try to induce a double play, double play ball here. And the pitch. Squares to bunt, does Johnson. But a good off-speed pitch there from Beery will work itself foul. As Casper Bauer will touch it foul. And the count will now be a one. Johnson already does have a sacrifice this afternoon. So he'll try to get another one right here. So he'll get the signs from his dugout. And he'll stare down Beery. Oh, one the count here to Johnson. He'll square to bunt. Pitch out. And the count will now be evened up ones. 11 to 6 your score. Kent State, 14 hits, no errors. Bobcat, 7 hits, 2 errors here. So we're on the top of the 7th of the 7 inning game. Game one of a doubleheader this afternoon between the Ohio Bobcats and the Kent State Golden Flashes. That pitch was a little high. Says the home plate umpire. The count will now run to 2-1. Runners on second. First and second here. For Kent State. It's delivery from Beery. Be in there for a strike. So the count is now even at twos. Johnson will likely be swinging here. <laughs> As Beery will give a half-hearted step off right there. So both him and Johnson will regain their concentration. So Beery gets the signs from his battery mate, Mason Minzy. the pitch it'll be lined foul up there on the hill almost hit a fan over there as Beery a pitcher that also takes his time up on the mound compared to his teammate Braxton Kelly who was ready to roll it's Beery's delivery that ball be driven, but fielded by Richardson. He'll field a touch second base, throw on to first, and that will be a double play all by himself, Michael Richardson, as that'll be a 4-3 unassisted double play there. So now stepping into the box will be Connor Ashby, the nine hole for the Kent State Golden Flashes. Two down now for the Bobcats here in the top of the seventh. Ashby working on a one for two day with an RBI and a walk so far. As Beery will work out of the wind. 
That pitch will run inside for a ball. Almost hit Ashby on that one. He had to duck out of the way, out of harm's way right there. Beery now works quickly. The pitch fouled off and off of Ashby. It's fouled right into the dirt. As Beery's ready to roll here, the designated hitter, Connor Ashby, is into the box. 1 1 delivery. It'll be low and into the dirt. 2-1 the count now. Two down here in the top of the seventh. Kent State leads Ohio 11-6. Over there at first, or on third, correction, is McNamara as that ball will be driven past the glove of Kale Baker for another RBI single in the right field as Connor Ashby just consistently keeps hitting those balls to right field for singles that drive, drive in runs. As now Kent State leads this game 12-6. And the leadoff hitter, Kyle Jackson, will be up for Kent State. We're going to one for three day with three RBIs, a strikeout, a sacrifice. Beery will work out of the stretch. The pitch will be blooped. It'll be in for a hit over the head of Hendigas. As Peterson will come on to field it. He'll throw it to second. And moving to third base will be Ashby as now Kent State has runners on the corners for the... Two hole, Justin Kirby, who has a two for four day working with a double, a triple, and an RBI, as well as reaching on an air. As Beery will try to work out of this. The Bobcats will need six now in the bottom of the seventh to give them a chance to play for extras at least. Runners at the corners here for the Golden Flashes. The pitch from Beery will be in there for a strike, and he'll start off Kirby with a strike. Kirby playing right field once again this afternoon. We're going to four for eight series so far, and that pitch will be low for a ball. As he's had two extra base hits here this afternoon. He can make it another one. Kent State might drive in another one or two runs here. The pitch will be out off the plate. Count runs to 2-1 now. Two down still here in the top of the seventh. As Kyle Jackson is on first. Connor Ashby is on third. Or Kent. This is Beery's pitch. Be a little off the plate for a ball. Home plate umpire did not like that one. Says it was just a little off. Sam and Minzy discuss it just a tad bit here. 3-1 to count now. <laughs> to the Kent State right fielder. The pitch. Now to be in there for a strike. Pitch had some good movement on it from Beery. And he'll work the count full now. And he'll try to get out of the inning here with his pitch. As Jackson will likely take off here on this full count. Two out pitch from Beery. The pitch, Jackson's off, and that ball will be cracked into left field down for a base hit and rounding second now will be Jackson as he rounds third now. Ball in, and they'll fake the throw, and Jackson will come in with a slide and a two-RBI double for the Kent State two-hole. Justin Kirby, who has three extra base hits now in the afternoon, and Kent State leads this ball game 14-6. to six. Solid piece of hitting right there. As Beery will face another batter in Aiden Longwell, the first baseman. Longwell working on a one for four day with two RBIs so far this afternoon. As 
as Beery will try to get out of this one. The pitch from Beery. That'll be a strike. Good movement on that pitch. And he'll start off along well with a strike. As runner out on second base is Justin Kirby, the right fielder, who had a double down the line, and that pitch will be fouled out of play. By the Kent State first baseman, Aiden Longwell. So he's now down 0-2 in the count. And Beery will deliver. That pitch will be fouled back. And Longwell will stay alive. Make sure to stick around for game number two of this doubleheader. As game one will only be a seven-inning ball game as we're in the top of the seventh. And game two will be a full nine-inning game. As it looks like Kent State will be the team to take game one of this doubleheader. The pitch will be in there. Strike three looking, and Longwell will go down on strikes, and that'll be the end of the top of the seventh. We'll take you to the seventh inning stretch. Kent State leads this ball game 14-6. to six. Bobcats need to score eight in the bottom of the seventh. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three, bang! And oh baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams. And we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity, loan subject to credit approval. Federally insured by NCUA, MLS number 433809. We're here in the bottom of the seventh, and this will be the last opportunity for the Bobcats to strike here in this one. As this is game one of the doubleheader this afternoon. So make sure to stick around for J game two as Jake Ramada will be on the call, and I will be on color for that game. As Spencer Harbert step into the box here for the Bobcats. Bobcats need eight to stay alive here in the bottom of the seventh. Still up there on the mound is Crookshank. Pitch from Benjamin. Go wide for a ball. Spencer Harbert. Here for the Bobcats. Harbert working on an 0 for three days so far. That pitch will be grounded off the third base bag for a base hit. And Harbert will make it one for four as he's digging for second. We'll round first to throw into second. Harbert will slide, and he'll be in there safely with a double down the line. That's why Harbert's an efficient hitter. He may not hit for average, but when he hits, he'll get you into scoring position or drive in runs as he'll clear the fences. So now the switch hitting Mason Minzy. Step into the box. Minzy working on a one for three day here. As the Bobcats have started the bottom of the seventh with a double from Spencer Harbert. So there's the pitch to Minzy. It'll be low in the dirt for ball one. Minzy has been sat down on strikes once this afternoon. It's a fly out and base hit to go along with that. 
the pitch here from Crookshank will be lined back up into the left center field gap, and that will definitely score Spencer Herbert as the Bobcats get on the board. Mincy rounds first, and he'll slide into second safely for an RBI double as the Bobcats strike here in the bottom of the seventh and finally crack Crookshank as the score is now 14-7. to seven. The second baseman Michael Richardson will step to the plate here for the Bobcats. Richardson working on a one for two day with a walk and a fly out. Two doubles to start the bottom of the seventh have given the Bobcats a run here as they've got no down and Benjamin Crookshank is still up on the mound here for Kent State. The pitch will be fouled back off the bat from Michael Richardson. Richardson had a solo shot in the eighth of yesterday's ball game, which gave the Bobcats the lead 5-4 over Kent, which led an offensive explosion in the eighth inning. So the Bobcats took game one 9-4. The pitch be in there for strike number two to Richardson as he's now in a hole 0-2. Crookshank is in, definitely in a pitcher's count here. Here's the pitch. Below in the dirt, blocked by Thompson. He'll keep it in front. Menzi not exactly the craziest speed threat over there on second base. He stayed put on that one. Count now 1-2 to Michael Richardson. Here's the pitch from Crookshank. That ball looped out in the left field. Got some carry on it, but won't carry enough as it will find the glove of Josh Johnson out there in left field, and that will be out number one here for the Bobcats. And the first baseman, Cale Baker, will now step to the plate. Baker working on a no for two day with a walk and a fielder's choice. as he beat out the throw for a double play his last at bat. One down here in the bottom of the seventh, the pitch to Baker, he'll swing right through that one. Fouled it right into the glove of Sam Thompson. Who is the battery mate, it has been the battery mate all afternoon or Crookshank. As here's the pitch from Crookshank. That pitch will run inside, in and out of the glove of Thompson. He'll be quick on his feet though. Menzi will not think about going to third on that one. As Baker now has the count evened up at ones. As coming set at the belt will be Benjamin Crookshank, the pitch. That pitch will work itself out of the zone. Had a little bit of tail action on that one. Two run now, two one now. The count to the Bobcat first baseman. As Crookshank will get his signs, pitch Be out off the plate once again. Three one now. The count to Kale Baker. Minzi out on second base. The pitch from Crookshank fouled back from Kale Baker. And the count will now be full. Three balls, two strikes, one down here in the bottom of the seventh. The so Bobcats are now down to their last two outs of this ball game. So Crookshank will come set of the belt. Pitch be way out and up. And that'll be ball four to Kale Baker, and he'll take his base at first. As now the ever-dangerous in this series, at least, A.J. Roush will step to the plate. We're going to two for three day with an RBI and a strikeout. So he's hit the Kent State Golden Flashes pretty well this weekend. Runners.
Rangers on first and second here for the Bobcat right fielder. And that pitch will be low and in the dirt for a ball. Roush will take that one, just spits on it. As Menzies out there on second base and Kale Baker is over at first. The pitch. He'll take that one for a strike. Did Roush. The count evens up at ones. One out here. In the bottom of the seventh, the pitch will run high and out to A.J. Roush. The Central Ohio product. As he'll stare down Crookshank. Crookshank will come set at the belt. The delivery will be fouled back and out of play. And the count now runs even at twos. And Roush will have to battle in there to keep this game alive for the Bobcats. So down their last two outs and definitely don't want a double play ball here. As Roush has grounded into one of those so far this season. The pitch and Roush will spit on it for a ball that will work the count full now. As it seems like Crookshank's starting to lose a little bit of his control here later in this ball game. As he walked Cale Baker, the last batter of the plate. And the full count delivery will be in there for a strike three looking. Roush thought it was up, but instead it was right in the zone. The Bobcats are now down to their final out. And the shortstop, Xavier Hennigas, will come to the plate. Working on a one-for-one one ball game with a sacrifice, a walk. As the score is 14-7 to seven here in the bottom of the seventh, and the 0-0 delivery will be in there for strike one from Benjamin Crookshank. As it stands right now, Crookshank would be the winning pitcher. Pitcher that would get the loss for the Bobcats would be Colin Sells. Sells would fall to one and one with his pitching record on the season as the second pitch is a little off the plate for a ball. While on the opposite end, Benjamin Crookshank would improve to one and two as he's been solid out of the pen, only giving up one run so far in this ball game for Kent State. As the pitch will be low in the dirt for a ball. As Crookshank has worked three and a third. Only giving up two hits, one earned run, four walks, and six strikeouts so far on the afternoon for the lefty. As the count is 2-1 now. Two down here in the bottom of the seventh to Hennigas. He'll swing right through that one, and the Bobcats are now down to their final strike this afternoon. As the count is evened up at two. And the delivery from Crookshank will be swung on. And that'll end this ball game as Kent State will win this one, win game one of this doubleheader, and win game two of this series by a score of 14 to seven over the Ohio Bobcats. Kent State had 17 hits in the ball game, while the Bobcats had nine on two airs. And Kent State had an offensive explosion, the winning pitcher improving now to one and two on the season. For Kent State will be Benjamin Crookshank, while falling to one and one in the season will be Colin Sells for the Bobcats. That'll be all for game one here at Bob Wren. Make sure to stay tuned for game two of this doubleheader. We'll have it to you here in about 40 minutes. Make sure to listen to that one. For the game one, this is Cade Williamson signing off.